husband while they were separated because you didn't think it was wrong. No, I would have never said something like that. Do not tell me what you didn't say because I got it on tape. Is it time for these siblings to separate? We have a, such a close family. When your sister's sleeping with your husband, the family's too close. Plus, he claims his girlfriend conned his 81-year-old mother. Out of $167,000. And stole almost half a million from him. We don't know where all this money goes. He does know where it went. Well, you say that like you are irritated with him. You stole his money and you're irritated with him? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Pretty free. Take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Here's a question for you. What if I told you there are reasons why you constantly are getting passed over for that promotion, maybe taken advantage of by a so-called best friend, or even conned out of your hard-earned money by some no-good gold digger? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know her. <laughs> okay. I've often said winners do things losers do not want to do, and today I'm going to tell you exactly what those things are. Isn't it interesting to know what it is winners do that other people just don't know about? Well, that mystery is solved today. Three months ago, I introduced a new, no kidding, playbook for how to navigate this ever-changing and sometimes scary world that we live in. It's called Life Code. The new rules for winning in the real world. I wanted to create an urgent awareness in you that there are people.
in this world called baiters who will use, abuse, and take what is yours, and they could actually be sitting right next to you at home or here. <laughs> Keep an eye on her. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna teach you how to stop being a target and more importantly, how to not only be a winner in your life, but how to win big. Now, my first guest, Rebecca, is a perfect example of someone in need of a new playbook. Rebecca says her life has been destroyed by her sister, Pamela, who says she not only had affairs with her boyfriends, but even Rebecca's husband. So this isn't a one-time deal. Take a look. My sister Pamela has slept with almost every man that I've been in a serious relationship with. The betrayal began when I was 19 and has been going on for 20 plus years. She had sex with the guy that took my virginity. Then she had sex with the man that I had a child with. Then she had sex with my husband. Then she had sex with my current boyfriend. Pamela made up all kinds of excuses from they made me, they seduced me. She was protecting me because if they slept with someone else, I could get a disease, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. She knew how bad it hurt me, and then she did it again and again and again. I received an anonymous letter that my sister was having an affair with my husband. I can't even tell you on daytime TV what this letter said. She made remarks that my ex-husband wouldn't have slept with her if I'd have taken care of him. I have hatred towards Pamela. I feel like I am a simmering pot that is gonna explode. Now Pamela says, look, it's been nearly 20 years it's time for Rebecca to move on. Let's hear her side of the story. My sister will not forgive me for having sex with her boyfriend and husband no matter what I do. As a teenager, I had sex with her boyfriend, so I guess I should have learned my lesson then. While Becky and her husband were separated, I did have sex with her husband. He'd been hitting on me for quite some time. He would tell me how beautiful I was. And finally, for once, I felt I could be equal with her. They got back together. I ended up having sex with him a couple more times. Since I had already done it once before, I kind of felt obligated. She doesn't like that I've moved on. It's been 20 years. I think it's time to let go. If Dr. Phil asked me if I liked my sister today, I would say no. OK, why did you want to be here today? Um, because I want my sister not to have to carry the anger and hate and that she's carrying towards me. Have you done the things she says that you've done? Yes, I have. So she would get a boyfriend, you would sleep with him? No, it hasn't. It was not like that at all. Her boyfriend that she has right now, <clears throat> they went on one it date. Is, it is like that. No, it's Okay, listen. Not. Okay, hold on. Time out. Because I've got two agendas here today. Mm -hmm. One agenda is to try to get everything on the table so you guys can heal. You can't change what you don't acknowledge, so we got to get it on the table. And you and I have one thing in common. We want her to move on. Yes. I, I agree with you on that. You are being your own worst enemy. You are being your biggest obstacle. I intend to change that today. I intend to set you free. I intend to give you a new playbook. I intend to give you what you need to win and win big in your life. Now, whether you admit to the things you've done or not actually is not essential to what I'm going to ask you to do, but it would be nice. Now, I said, did you sleep with her boyfriends? And you said, well, no. And you said, whoa, what? She did or she didn't? Obviously, she admitted she did. OK, she's, she's how many saying, boyfriends no. of yours has she slept with, counting your husband? Um, six. Six? Yeah. Six. Do you dispute the number? Um, yeah. Five, four? It's what? been um, four, but there's been relationships that both and I, her and I, have been in um, growing up. Okay, well, what is your point? She has no reason because, to be upset? No, she has you, a reason to be upset for her husband and the father of her child. That's it. The okay. other... It's only two of them dates. you ran a red light. The other four... No. The no, other four what, she no, didn't have any What I'm saying is there's, there's people that we've gone out on dates with 
the reason it's hard for me to let go is that I am currently dating somebody that she has been with, so I still, a human I, nature. After I was with him, she, she now is with him. This is a big world. I don't sleep with my, my girlfriend's men, whether it's current or previous, or hers, whether it's current or previous. There's too many people but in this world. But she does yours. To sleep with you, your sister. Why do you sleep yeah. with her husband and father of her child and any number of others? Why do you do that? I think that alcohol and drugs clouded my, my um, judgment. Do you still do alcohol and drugs? I drink occasionally. I do not do okay. drugs. I understood that you felt like you had um, what you referred to as a multiple personality disorder and that it was another personality that did this. Absolutely not. No? No. Um, so there's not a Michelle in there? No, there is. There is another personality, but um, I remember all these. When my other personality comes out, I have no recollection. So, and you remember these. So that wasn't yes, Michelle was that did that. That was you. It was me. And I don't mean to make light of this. I'm asking you seriously. And today, though, we're talking to Pamela. Yes. You said you do this because of alcohol and drugs. Why do the alcohol and drugs make you do that? That would maybe make you I sleep would, with somebody down the street. No. But why does that alcohol and drugs make you sleep with her men? It, it doesn't. I, there's no excuse for what I did, Dr. Well, Phil. I'm not asking for an excuse. No I'm reason. asking if you have any insight to it. it. You, you said... You slept with her husband while they were separated. Correct. You said you thought they were separated, so it didn't they matter. Were, no, it did matter. And all I said was that they were separated. Well, what you said, and it's in quotes, they were separated, didn't think it was wrong. No, I would have never said something like that. Okay. That after you ridiculous. got back, after they got back together, you did it two more times? Yes. After they were back together? Correct. Why did you do that? Were you drunk and high both of those times? I was. Because in all of our pre-interviews, you never told us you did it because you were drunk and high. They never asked why. They never asked I why. Mean, wow. I mean, that yeah. has never come up. Okay. Well, I'm asking now, and so you're telling us. You said that he told you you were beautiful. Yeah, he did. And so you finally felt equal to your sister. Not equal. Um, She's... We've got a, either a really bad typewriter... No, she's... Because this is in quotes. Equal as in, I felt, since he thought she was pretty and then thought I was pretty, I was like, wow, you know, she's a beautiful person. So you, that validated you. See, this helps me understand, because I think maybe if she understood, it would be easier for her to get past this. I understand that, and, and she's told me that, but I think I've been holding this big sister that, that I got to be the strong one without her really realizing what she's done. Yeah, but see, this is up to you. You're blaming how you feel on her. I wrote down some of the things that you said, unless our typewriter got a mind of its own with you as well. You said, quote, see, when I put things in quotes, that's because it came verbatim from a recorded interview that was transcribed. And I probably said so it. So you said... I cannot get over what she did to me, and it has ruined my whole life. It has. You say that you stay with your current boyfriend, although the relationship is unhealthy, that she's already slept with him, so she wouldn't want him. I just don't want to go through this again. Um, and, and, and history would that be has a yes? shown. It would be a yes. Okay. It really would. And, and it's not healthy for me to do that. You have allowed your sister to live with you and your husband after she slept with two previous boyfriends? I did, and she apologized and begged for my forgiveness. So, yes, I did take her back in trusting her. I had no you, idea you, she You did let again. the fox in the hen house. I did. I made a mistake, I guess. Now, you don't respond well to it because she says, I think she said, uh -huh. that you have choked, punched, kicked, and slapped her. I have not. You have not? No, I have not. Did, did you say that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I actually have, um, last time I called the police on her, um, <coughs> she ended up taking pictures. Did she cause you to me. fall down the stairs? No, yes. Did she cause her to fall down the stairs? No. In San Diego? She had me arrested, but the charges were dropped because she I, lied in front of uh, the judge. Uh, have you called the no, police on her five times? Lie. Have you called the police on her five times? No. I called the police on her one time, 
and that's when I had, she, they took pictures of me who, who bleeding. Who called the police the other four times? Probably Becky. She, she's the most cop calling person I've ever so met. So you're calling the cops on each other? No. No? Well, uh, <laughs> I've done it, yes. Um, I admit that I've done it once. And you want to know how to be free of this? <sighs> Not really? just be free, but to have a sister that I can grow old with. And, and, and yeah, that may I, not I want... happen. <laughs> uh, really, that may not happen, but he may. I just thought there was a solution to every problem, and I've tried well, to find this one, and I can't. Well, okay. That's why we came to you. The, I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm going to put verbs in my sentences. I'm going to be real clear. But we'll be right back. Pam is a very vindictive person. She told the police that I hit her in the face. She's hit me, smacked me, kicked me, punched me. My sister's out for revenge. Hold it, hold it. What the hell? They asked me if she, she they asked me if she has hit, uh, slapped, punched, kicked me, and I said yes, but not technically. She never kicked me. But she's slapped, punched, choked, everything else. Okay, the kicking. Okay, she didn't okay, kick you, me. So you're saying that my producer told you to say those things? No, they asked me if she's ever hit, punched, kicked. I said yes. Excuse me, can we take the kicking part out? If you are here to fix this problem, okay. then you need to be honest and we'll deal with it. And if you're not, then you need to hit the bricks and let me talk to somebody who's real. Because this, this sister dynamic here, well, well, I didn't really say that. Well, I did say this, I did say that, is a load of crap, because I got it on tape. So do not tell me what you did and didn't say. Do you think I just sit up here and make this stuff up because I got nothing else to do? No, I believe that you've got the right information that well, was Well, you said. damn bet you I do. Yeah, I do believe you do. I got exactly what both of you said. So then you say, well, okay, I said it, but your producer told me to say it. That lady is no. a crock. I didn't say it like that, Dr. Phil. Is what I'm saying is they asked me if she had ever punched, kicked, slapped, or hit me, and I said yes. Now Becky's saying, well, I didn't kick you. I okay. said I've never kicked you, Kicking. Pamela, and I've never choked you. Yes, you did. So okay, y'all just go right on talking but, like but I'm not even here. I, no, I'm sorry. I don't think that that right now is any of that is relevant. It's relevant to me no, because no, no, you challenge saying, the integrity of my staff. I'm, I'm going to fight you till the cows come home. Okay. You are not going to insult my staff. No way. No how you will not insult my staff. I'm saying what's not relevant is the issues that we're discussing right now on whether it was kicked or punched or slapped. The point is, we've had fights. She has assaulted me, absolutely. <laughs> That's, not, <laughs> it's not the point. We've been through a number of things here that you said you didn't say, and you did say them. Did, did you say that when you had sex after they got back together that you figured already had sex, so obligated to do it? I did feel obligated. I didn't it's ask you if you felt obligated. I asked you if you said that. Oh, yes, I did say that. I asked you, you said it yes. before you said no. Yes, I said that. So now you say yes. Yeah. You said no before you say yes. No, now. you've never asked that question. <laughs> yes. So I, I guess we're coming back now. From we were That was all on a break. Well, today we're talking about the new rules to becoming a street smart, savvy player in your own life. And I've written it all down in my new book, Life Code, The New Rules for Winning in the Real World. Now, I am very proud to say that my book is being published by my son Jay's publishing company, Bird Street Books, and it's available in stores for the first time today. And Pamela says after 20 years, her sister Rebecca is still out for revenge. But Rebecca says it's Pamela who's trying to destroy her life. Take a look. My sister's out for revenge. She's hit me, smacked me, kicked me, punched me. She's broke into my apartment. Pam is a very vindictive person. A lot of people fear her. My sister has told other people that I've had an affair with her current boyfriend. She said that she didn't have enough mean things to say, so she made him up. The last time, she physically attacked me. I had to call the police. And she was arrested for assault. She told the police that I hit her in the face. I didn't hit my sister in the face. One time, Rebecca kissed my boyfriend right in front of me. When I asked my sister if anything had happened between 
my boyfriend and her, all she said is, I'm going to make you wonder for the next 20 years. You did say she kicked you. <laughs> Sorry. You did say it, right? OK. Right? I'm just saying. Yes. You said it. That's why I said yes. it. I don't make stuff up. There's plenty without making stuff up. Definitely. It isn't about blame. You two have a toxic relationship. It takes two to have a relationship. And you two have defined this as toxic. If you want to win in your life, you've got to change the way you are playing the game. OK? Sometimes we engage with people that just don't have characteristics that merge well with us. I talk in, in the book about something we call baiters. OK? In fact, I wrote this down for you. I'm going to talk about it real quickly. If she's sleeping with your boyfriends and husbands, then I'm going to think that that's probably going to fit, OK? If she's doing things that are hurting you, that's going to fit. That's going to fit. She could probably make a similar statement about you. I don't know, but I'm just telling you, you've got to understand, if you've got people like this in your life, what do you need to do? Get away from them. Get away from them. But most importantly, what I want to talk to you about is what you have to do to create what I consider a win. Are, are you with me? I am with you. I'm getting kind of a blank stare here. We have such a close family. When your sister's sleeping with your husband, the family's too close. <laughs> Most importantly, what I want to talk to you about is what you have to do to create what I consider a win. Are, are you with me? I am with you. I'm getting kind of a blank stare here. I I'm with you. We have such a close family, it's hard to... No, you don't. Listen, when your sister's sleeping with your husband, the family's too close. <laughs> OK? Now, if you want to change it, you want to change it. I don't know if you're saying I need to just completely get rid of her or no, if I need to create some No, you don't know because you boundaries. started whining about it before I had a chance to tell you. OK. Do you want to change this or do I you do. not? Seriously, come I on. I seriously do. I'm not trying to talk you into it. You wrote me. I did, and I do want things to change. Then you've got to understand. Look, these, and, and, and I'll talk about this for everybody out here. <laughs> and I, I want you to do this. I'm going to haunt you till you do, so you might as well surrender. If what you're doing in your life is not working, don't you need to do something different? I agree. I mean, seriously. I, I do. If you want to be a winner, these are the things that you absolutely have to have. Number one, you have to have a defined image. You've got to know who you are. Your defined image right now is that of victim. You are downtrodden. I'm staying with a guy that's unhealthy because she won't want him. No way. You've got to change that. You deserve better than that. You've got to believe better than that. You've got to decide who you are, and you've got to commit to that. An image, the way you see yourself and the way you see others. Your self-esteem's got to go up. And it's your life. Play big. If you don't star in your life, who is? Be proud of Rebecca. Get the image and then play big. Winners play big. You've got to know your real currency. What truly matters to you? Because right now, apparently, happiness doesn't matter to you. Because you have settled for less than happy for a long, long time. Would you agree with that? Yes. You deserve better. I know I do. I feel broken. And, and I don't want to be a victim. But that's the image you've had. That's the defined image. You've got to know what your currency is. You've got to always have a plan. And winners, interestingly, keep their plans close to the vest. You've got to stay in investigatory mode. You've got to know what's going on. Know who you, and you've got to surround yourself with a nucleus of supporters. 
Supporters don't go behind your back and sleep with your boyfriends and husbands. Supporters don't call the cops on you. Supporters don't say bad things about you. And I tell you one thing winners do. Man, oh man, oh man, they deal with the truth. You are doing none of these things. You want to win big? I've got detailed steps on every one of these things for you to do. And if that means that you're going to surround yourself with a nucleus of supporters, supporters, she's going to have to earn her way into that circle. Yeah. You support everything I'm saying, right? Absolutely. She yeah. wants this for you. She deserves it. Can you then have a relationship with your sister? Maybe when you come at it from a position of strength, not weakness. Right now, you're a, you're a victim. And you're never at a weaker position than when you are an angry victim. I want you to have a defined image. I want you to play big in your own life. And in Life Code, I tell you exactly, precisely, step by step, how to do that. Will you do it? I will. And you have got to deal with the truth. And if the truth is that this isn't working, then you need a break, you need a timeout. Okay. All right, he says he's been robbed blind to the tune of nearly a half a million dollars. The culprit, his current girlfriend. We're gonna meet both of them next, and I have got some things to say to both of them. We'll be right back. <laughs> My girlfriend, Megan, has robbed me blind to the tune of almost $450,000. I use the word take rather than stole. I told Megan to move out of my house, and she refuses to leave. You gotta throw out the rule book, because I have written a new one. The new rule book is called Life Code, the new rules for winning in the real world. I read your book, Life Code, and I loved it. I had a friendship several years ago that did not end well and really didn't understand what went wrong. After having read your book, I feel confident that I can move forward, set healthy boundaries for friendships in my life, and be able to value myself in doing that. Thank you. As a counselor in a men's state prison, I work with literally hundreds of baiters. There are some people in this world that I say will use you, abuse you, take advantage of you. I call them baiters. The book showed us not only what techniques these baiters use, but the techniques that we need to use to protect ourselves from them. It has really, really changed my life. I just want to let you know how much your book, Life Code, has impacted me. I'm definitely on the lookout for baiters and looking out for the characteristics for the evil eight. I appreciate you writing this book, and everyone out there should definitely give it a read. Bye, Dr. Phil. Well, we've been talking about how you can stop being targeted by the abusers, exploiters, and takers of the world, and more importantly, start living the life you deserve. To win big, you need the right playbook, and I, I gotta tell you, I am obviously very passionate about this. I'm more excited about this book than any I've written, and I think this is number eight. It is called Life Code, The New Rules for Winning in the Real World. I'm very proud to say the book's published by my son, Jay, his publishing company, Bird Street Books, and it's available in bookstores nationwide today. Now, my next guest, Steve, says his girlfriend, Megan, has taken him to the cleaners to the tune of nearly a half a million dollars. My girlfriend, Megan, has robbed me blind to the tune of almost $450,000. I use the word take rather than stole because I believe that when you steal something, you don't ever intend on giving it back to the person. I have proof that Megan has stolen money for shopping, gas money, Starbucks. I've used Steve's credit cards without telling him. She's taken my ATM card. I've written checks out of Steve's account. I was in Brazil and within about five minutes, she had already wrote about five checks to herself. This is not my writing right here. This is not my signature. Megan has forged all these documents of power of attorney to bank accounts to everything so she can have access to all my accounts and basically ruin my life. We had exchange students come live with us and she racked up just about $500 on their credit cards. When Steve finds out I've taken money, he gets angry and is verbally aggressive. We've had physical altercations. Megan is a pathological liar. He makes me pay for the things I've done every single day. If I didn't owe Steve money, we would have a great relationship. You two have been in a relationship how long? 
Five years? Five years. She, she likes to play semantics, in my view, and say, well, I don't call it stealing if I intend to give it back. Oh, How yeah. is that not stealing? Well, for, first of all, I did take without his knowledge, but a lot of the money that I owe him in that 400000 he gave willingly to me. So I, and I have paid him back some of what I have taken. Um, okay. When, when you misappropriate funds through an ill-gotten power of attorney, is, is that stealing? Yes. Okay, I, I, just, I just want to be sure we're defining our terms right. You have confession letters, correct? Yes. I, I've read the confession right. letters. You basically confessed in writing that, that you took the money yes. illegally, right? Yes. Okay, so what is it we're talking about? I'm not saying I didn't do anything wrong. I'm okay. not saying I didn't take his money. Are you a slow learner? <laughs> Five years? Yeah. What, what's up? Was no, that... not a slow learner. Just try to help them all. She conned your 81-year-old mother out of $167,000. Right. You let someone not just occasionally, but repeatedly steal from you, steal from your family, exploit you, make excuses, do it again. And this, but this could have been going on years ago. And I mean, I mean, she is a sweet lady and, you know, very likable. When you're doing it, do you think, wow, I'm really doing a bad thing here? Yes. So you think about it at the time? Yes. How do you make it okay with yourself? I don't make it okay with myself. No, based on results, you do. Well, I don't, I don't make it, I, I do it, there's, I don't ever think it's okay, though. All right, let's take a break. Nearly a half a million dollars gone. Where does Steve go from here? Does he prosecute Megan, walk away from it all? I'm going to tell him that I think there is one major flaw in his thinking when we come back. Well, we've been discussing how the game of life has changed, and with it, so have the rules. So it takes a new strategy if you want to win and win big. I've been talking to Steve, who says his girlfriend, Megan, has stolen near a half million dollars. It's 400 and some odd dollars. And as we heard, she's also duped Steve's 81-year-old mother. Megan stole it from my mom. Steve's mom had offered to lend me $3,000 for the family business. And we agreed not to tell Steve because we knew how he would react. Megan went behind my back and got into my bank accounts. I took some money from Nancy's accounts. Megan stole $167,828.43. It made me feel sad to think such a nice girl could be doing that. My parents cashed in some of their retirement and their annuities and paid Nancy back all the money she was owed. I think Megan needs some serious help. Nancy, hello. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry that this has happened to you. Uh, what do you think about uh, your son here staying in this relationship and allowing this to continue to happen? Well, I think um, the reason he didn't do, do anything more about it, he was kept hoping that eventually they'd come up with the money and pay him back. Yeah. Um, is that part of it that you think, well, I'm going to stay hooked up here and because it's my only hope of getting the money back? Well, that's one part, but I mean, it's like she's a nice lady. You, you want to you wanna say there's got to be more to her than this, and maybe she made a, a big mistake, and maybe she is going to pay it back, and I don't just give up on people. Okay. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what, what do you think's wrong with you? I don't know if I knew, I would fix it. I don't know. Okay. She loves money, but we don't know where all this money goes. You do know where it went. No, we Steve. don't. He does know where it don't. went. Don't. No, you say that like you are irritated with him. No, I'm... He's, you, you stole his money and you're no, irritated with him? No, I'm not irritated him? with him, but... He, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, I'm, you are. <laughs> Is there an echo in here? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I'm not irritated with him. For, I'm irritated that he says he doesn't know where it went. I don't know does. where it goes. Where could you oh. put all that money? Okay. Not on me. You're irritated. See, yeah. this, see this is important because, look, I'm, 
I hear what isn't said as much as I hear what is said when I when I watch things. I I've, I've kind of watched what you're doing, and you you exhibit absolutely no remorse for this whatsoever. That's now, not I know, true, and he'll tell you that. No, I know. Listen, I've read your letters. I, I've read your your letters, the, your long diatribes where this is horrible. I can't believe I've let you down in this way. I know I've disappointed you. I know I've hurled that. I swear, if it's my last breath, I will make this right to you. I, I've heard all of that, and then I've looked at the timeline, and while you were writing that letter, there were things going on to do cashotomies on him that he didn't even know about. What What will happen when he runs out of money? If he had no money, what would you do? It's been empty already, and I didn't even know it. What would you do if he had zero money? I'm not sure how to answer that. We because would you find another target? No. The, the reason I was using the money was to save a struggling business that is closed now. So. Yeah, because I, I closed it. Okay, but regardless, <clears throat> it's closed. So I don't, all that money went for that business. You can't be that far in debt in a business. That's tons of money. But, but we were. Ask me a question. What do you want to know? What about the money? When's it coming back? It's not coming back. Right. Kiss it goodbye. You know, everyone will right. see it again. What do you want to know? Because I'm going to tell you the truth as I see it. Well, I kind of see it too, but I'm hoping <clears throat> for not that. But it's like... What do you want? Ask me a question. What do you want to know? I was going to ask her, but I'll ask you. What about the money? When's it coming back if it's coming back? It's not coming back. Kiss right. it goodbye. You know, everyone right. will see it again. Well, I figured that, but... Well, because there's too many things that don't make sense. And that's when I finally said, that's enough. It's enough. Embezzlers don't pay money back. You're not going to get it back. And she can tell you you're going to get it back. I've read the letter from the parents. It's notarized and signed by both of well, them. You... They're going to get this money and that money. And, all, and, and you may get some money from them, from their inheritance, trying to keep her out of jail. But money that she's taken and converted, gone. Well, I was looking for straight answers, pretty much. And that's fine. I can take it. What I was hoping would be on your list of questions is, Dr. Phil, what's wrong with me? I already know that. What is it? Too nice. Yeah. And... Well, not 100% nice, but <clears throat> 99 yeah. Really? All right, 85. You've got some illusion here that it, there is a virtue in tolerance of toxic behavior. There's no virtue in tolerance of toxic behavior. That's not being nice. That's being an enabler. And this woman is going to go to prison. If she doesn't change what she's doing, she's going to go to prison. She may go to prison on what she's already done just to you. And if she's done it to you, Romeo, don't think you are the first one or the well, only believe one. believe me, here's a funny story. So I'm sitting in my driveway. A guy pulls up who's hey. a friend of mine. And he goes, be careful with her. She'll rob you blind. And look what happened. I'm like, no, she won't. I mean, you don't know anything about her. Yeah, let me tell you. I want to show you something here. I want you to look at this right here. You see this? We were raised to give people the benefit of the doubt, right? I mean, that's how I was raised. Right. Well, let me tell you something. That could not be more wrong and more outdated. That is crazy. Why give people the benefit of the doubt? Why not, instead of giving people the benefit of the doubt, why not just keep an open mind? Why not gather information? Why not, as I said when I was looking at the Sweet 16, stay in investigative mode? Deal with the truth. You know, we need to become street smart, savvy players in the game of life. Investigatory mode. Always, if somebody comes and pulls up to your curb and says, hey, watch her, she'll steal you blind. That's kind of a random occurrence, isn't it? <laughs> I, just kind of, I, I, don't, I can't think of a single person I've ever had pull up to a curb and tell me that about somebody. So when that happens, you know, I'm thinking, wow, uh, this, this is registering with me. I'm going into investigatory mode. I'm going to check. And when I start seeing money missing and it happens once, you go, wow, she was desperate, loves her family, and just could not sit by and watch her parents' business collapse. 
but then she does it again and 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 again to hundreds of thousands of dollars, there gets the point where you got to say, I'm not concerned about her, I'm concerned about me. Do not let her next to your money. Do not let her next to your mother's money. Do not let her next to your life because she will tell you she doesn't know why she does this. She doesn't have the ability not to do this. Well. And she needs help. And she may get that in prison, or you may, and maybe she doesn't get prosecuted because you choose not to prosecute her. I'm not concerned about that. But seriously, you need help. There's something wrong with your moral compass that allows you to do this. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm telling you, you need help. And I'm willing to try and get you some help. If you want help, I will try and get you some help. You need to learn how to not do this. Do you agree with that? Yes. Because if he continues to buy your lies, then you need help. No, I stopped buying the lies, but it's just a little too late. But but it doesn't, and you don't keep her around and, and, and just... Well, she said she has nowhere to go. That is not your problem. Well... You've got to put down boundaries, and you've got to require more of the people in your life. You deserve better. And if you want to win in your personal life, then you've got to require more of people, just as they, are requir they have the right for you to meet standards in their life.